What is the difference between wasps and bees? As far as most people are concerned, wasps and bees are annoying little flying buzzers that will sting you at a moment's notice with zero regrets. However, while this can be true in certain cases, is that all there is to these insects? Well, today's video is going to try to answer that question. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take a look at the similarities and more importantly the differences between wasps and bees. Let's get started. Bees Bees are flying insects that belong to the Apoidae superfamily under the Hymenoptera order. The Hymenoptera order is also home to other major insect groups, including ants, wasps, and sawflies. As you can see, bees are closely related to wasps and share a bunch of characteristics as a result, which is why they can be confused with each other. Bees are popular among humans because of their ability to pollinate plants and some species' ability to produce honey. Humans have reared honeybees all over the world for countless generations. That said, there is much more to the bee superfamily than the honeybees we're all familiar with. In fact, there are over 20,000 known bee species distributed among seven families. Most of these, like the carpenter and leafcutter bees, live solitary lives and only come together to breed. A select but popular few species like honeybees and bumblebees live in groups called colonies or hives. With such a wide range of species come a wide range of characteristics. The smallest bees are barely 8 one-hundredth inches long. Wallace's giant bee, Megahil Pluto of Indonesia, is the largest bee species in the world and can reach lengths of 1.7 inches. Bees differ in appearance but have a few generalized traits. Most species have mixed coloration, usually black or brown, mixed with yellow or orange. Insectologists believe this colorway serves as a warning of their potential to sting. All bees also have specialized mouthparts adapted for chewing and sucking up liquids, like nectar. The mandibles handle the former task while a long proboscis handles the latter. Most bee species also have lots of hair on their bodies. These hair are called ceti and are used to trap pollen. Bees also have extra-sensitive CT on their antennae to help them sense changes in air movement and track down sounds. In fact, bee antennae are also responsible for a bee's sense of smell, taste, and touch. Bees are found everywhere in the world, bar the poles. They can live in any place with sufficient access to pollen-rich flowering plants, which are central to their existence. Bees feed on nectar and pollen. Nectar meets the bulk of a bee's energy requirements, while pollen supplements nutrition in the form of protein and other essential minerals. Pollen is also a rich food source for bee larvae, and adults spend a lot of time bringing it home to feed the next generation. Bees' roles as pollinators also help humans in a variety of ways. For starters, bees play an important ecological role by helping to preserve plant species that are wholly dependent on insect pollination. Some of these plants may be useless to humans, but they still play important roles in their respective ecosystems. Bees also aid the pollination of many commercial crops. Planning on starting a citrus orchard? Well, bees can help. Studies show that populations of wild indigenous bees are shrinking worldwide. This decline is already having a significant impact on many plant species, which may soon teeter on the brink of extinction. In the UK alone, wild bees have disappeared from over 25% of the areas they thrived in back in 1980. The reduction of wild bees places even greater importance on beekeeping, which is also known as apiculture. Countries like Germany are offering incredible perks and benefits to apiculturists because of their commitment to ecological preservation. Bees are also famous for their relentless work ethic and have inspired similes like busy as a bee. They are always on the move, whether in search of food, building hives, making honey, or fighting enemies. Speaking of fighting, bees are also known for aggression, especially in defense of their hives. Social bees are the most feared in this regard because their great numbers can even kill adult humans. Many bee species are armed with a special stinger that deploys from the back of the abdomen. The stinger is actually an adaptation of an egg-laying canal called an ovipositor. Therefore, only female members of stinging bee species can actually sting. Honeybees have a unique stinger that has a barb. When they sting, the barb causes the abdomen to detach from the rest of the bee's body, leaving the stinger and venom gland attached to the sting site. The loss of the abdomen kills the bee, 
This is why honeybees generally only sting as a last resort to defend themselves or their hives. Most other stinging bees, like the bumblebee and carpenter bee, can sting repeatedly because their stingers do not have barbs. These bees may also sting other bugs for predation. Wasps As we've already discussed, wasps belong to the Hymenoptera order of insects. However, their exact classification can be a bit confusing because they are not grouped under one superfamily, like bees or ants. Ants, for instance, belong to the Formicoidae superfamily. So, a rough definition of a wasp is any narrow-waisted insect in the Hymenoptera order, but outside the Formicoidae and Apoidae superfamilies. Ants and bees are more neatly classified than wasps because, technically, they are wasps or are at least descendants of stinging wasps from the Crabronidae family. The term wasp refers to any one of the tens of thousands of species we have discovered so far. Many species are still to be discovered and named. There are at least seven superfamilies and dozens of families of wasps. Hornets, which fall under the Vespa genus, are also wasps. However, you don't need to be a taxonomist to identify a wasp when you see one. Most of them have slender bodies with narrow waists, and many of them can fly. Several species lack stingers, but most do. They come in all sorts of colors, from yellows and oranges to blues and purples. They also range in size quite significantly. Dicopomorpha ecmeptergis, with its 139 micrometer body length, is both the smallest wasp and the smallest insect in the world. On the other end of the scale, we have the long-tailed giant ecnumenid wasp. Megarhissa macrurus, which can be up to 5 inches long. The Asian giant hornet is the heaviest, as it can reach 1 ounce. Wasps are a very diverse and successful supergroup of animals that are found everywhere except the polar regions. They know how to win the survival game, and they have evolved many ways of playing it. Some wasps are social and form collaborative colonies headed by queens. Yellow jackets, paper wasps, and Asian giant hornets are prominent eusocial wasps that form colonies with up to 6,000 individuals. The life of a wasp colony revolves around the nest, the queen, and the larva she spawns. Worker wasps are non-reproducing females that help build the nest, find food, and defend the nest from threats. Drone wasps are reproductive males who mate with queens. On the other hand, most wasp species are solitary. These wasps are mainly focused on taking care of number one and will only come together to mate but this isn't necessary. For many species, females that have their eggs fertilized by males will spawn female wasps. If unfertilized, male wasps will emerge from the eggs. This reproductive system allows wasps to control their sex ratios. Like most bees, most adult wasps primarily live on nectar. Some, like hornets, eat other insects by dissolving their bodies with saliva and slurping them up. Wasp larvae are almost always carnivorous. To support their young, the adults must hunt. Social wasps and some solitary wasps employ progressive provisioning, repeatedly bringing morsels of food back to the nest for the larva. Other solitary species employ mass provisioning, which involves leaving a single massive meal for the larva and leaving them to develop and pupate alone. We also have wasps that are called parasitoid wasps. These wasps are deadly hunters who will target a prey animal and inject it with their stingers to deposit their eggs inside. When the larvae hatch, they begin eating the unwilling host from the inside, usually while it is still alive. Different species exert varying degrees of manipulation on hosts, from simple paralysis to complete mind control. The parasitoid wasp, Ampulix compressa, is a particularly cool example. This killer targets cockroaches, and stings them in the head to hit the central complex of the brain. When the venom is injected, the roach becomes compliant and halts all resistance and escape attempts. The wasp then guides the cockroach back to its burrow, where it lays an egg on its body and closes the burrow entrance. The larva hatches a few days later and feasts on the still-paralyzed cockroach. Many wasp species can sting repeatedly, and they employ their stingers for both offense and defense. Some species are more aggressive than others. Male wasps cannot sting because they do not have ovipositors. Differences between wasps and bees The first discernible difference is that bees are significantly hairier than wasps. These hairs are essential for carrying pollen from plant to plant and back to the nest or hive to feed larvae. Wasps are capable pollinators in their own right, 
but they do not need to carry pollen home because their young are carnivorous. Another difference is how bees and social wasps get their protein. Bees meet their protein requirements by consuming pollen. Social wasps, on the other hand, get their protein from larvae. In these social wasps, larvae produce sugary saliva that is also rich in amino acids. Nectar-loving adults in the colonies consume these sweet secretions and boost their protein intake as a side bonus. The next difference, which is specifically between honeybees and wasps, is stinging frequency. As we've already discussed, honeybees can only sting once because their abdomens detach onto the sting victim. In contrast, all stinging wasp species can sting repeatedly. Another difference is aggression. Bees are generally more focused on their daily tasks and routines and will only attack if seriously provoked or if their nest or hive is under threat. Bees are also less predatory than wasps, primarily feeding on nectar and pollen. Wasps are generally more aggressive than bees, but they seldom attack unprovoked. Wasp aggression is also tied to the fact that they are generally more predatory than bees. The biggest, meanest wasps are usually apex predators with no threat from other animals. Bees, even when packing a stinger, are more prey than predators. Honey production is another area of difference. It's important to note, however, that most bee species do not make honey. However, honeybees can make enough to compensate for this lack. Wasps, on the other hand, do not make honey. The only honey-producing wasp, the Mexican honey wasp, only produces small quantities to feed itself. Nests also have certain differences. Not only are honeybee hives larger than most wasp nests, but they also tend to have multiple entrances. Above-ground wasp nests usually have only one entrance.